Hey, how's it going gamers? Before I get into this video, I want to make a little quick premise. This video was written back when the second season had just dropped. I never got around to posting it because of some discouraging copyright issues I've been having with DreamWorks and Sony regarding my other Shira video on Catra. Thankfully, it seems I've managed to get around those issues, and the video is finally up on my channel if you're interested. So, all that being said, the third and fourth seasons weren't available to me at the time, and even now I haven't really gotten around to watching them. So, if there's anything in those seasons that kind of debunk any points that I make in this video, just keep in mind, this is an older video, but with that out of the way, enjoy. I really like DreamWorks Shira. I would say that I'm a fan of the modern reboot of She-Ra. And as a fan of something, beyond loving it, I think it's important that you judge it. Just because you or I pass criticism on something doesn't necessarily mean that our opinions are negative. Criticism is crucial. I recognize this. And that's why, despite my liking of the show, I can easily say with total confidence that She-Ra Season 2 has totally ruined Frosta. Before the second season dropped and I was still in the midst of finishing the first, I was very eager to learn about all the individual princesses in the show's opening. The already established princesses, while bland, did widely differ from one another in personality and in ability. So I was curious to see the rest. Enter the episode Princess Prom, the overall best episode in the series in my opinion. Beyond the development of Adora and Katra, this episode is important for a couple of other main reasons, namely the world building and the introduction of Frosta and her kingdom. Frosta's introduction really caught me off guard. I mean, seeing as I only had her appearance in the opening to develop my ideas on what she'd be like, it's natural that I'd make a lot of wrong assumptions. But this? I was more wrong than I could have imagined, even at a fundamental level. There's only so much I can go over for this point, so it shouldn't take too long. Given what we've seen in the opening, Frosta is presumably a princess wielding ice magic. She appears alongside the other already pre-established princesses, and to top it all off, is smiling. This is a very blatant implication that she's on the rebellion side, and considering how the show works, also a friend of the main cast. With the way that shows like She-Ra condition the viewer coupled with my own pre-established assumptions about her character, I was thrown totally off guard by this. Frosta is this calm, collected, and by-the-book princess who seems more concerned with herself and her citizens more than either side of the war. She's incredibly strict and demanding of those around her, and doesn't seem to have high tolerance for mistakes on other people's part. And it's never directly stated, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember it being alluded to either. What I'm talking about is the reason for Frosta's aggressive personality. With Frosta being a child, I like to imagine that her premature ascending to the throne caused this. Taking off such a massive and constant responsibility has to be stressful and aggravating. This mix with Frosta's potential pressure to appear as a strong and independent leader has led her to be more aggressive and angry than she would otherwise be. This would also explain why Frosta has a lack of friends, thus directly contributing to her social awkwardness and her inability to properly make friends. The first season establishes a pretty in-depth personality for Frosta in only a single episode, and it's also worth noting that Frosta makes an appearance and a contribution at the Battle of Brightmoon and the season's finale. However, this does nothing for her character beyond establishing what her side in the war is. Because of this, I was super interested in what they were going to do with her character come Season 2. Contrary to Season 1, Season 2's opening episode actually features Frosta alongside a variety of returning characters, and as unfortunate as it is, it's awful. Honestly, it's bad. Like, really bad. I'm not sure what the plan was here. Maybe the writers thought that Frosta's personality would make it more difficult for a target audience to relate to and even like her? I'm not really sure, but whatever the reason, the second season debuts with a HARD reboot on Frost's personality. Instead of the strict, cold, and careful leader that she was only a few episodes prior, she's now this overly peppy, rambunctious, and frankly annoying little girl in an ice mech. One of her biggest appeals for me personally was the sense of forced responsibility, that because of her position, she was forced to grow up just a little too quick. Beyond obvious contenders like Glitter's mother, Shadow Weaver, and maybe Catra, Frosta was the most mature character in the first season, and I liked that about her. It was nice, and a much needed change of pace from the other characters. So needless to say, I wasn't very happy when I saw what had become of her. Granted, we do get some growth on her part with her explaining to Glimmer her situation and lack of friends. It reveals that she's always just sought acceptance from others. That might be an explanation to her change in character 
that maybe she thought it would be easier for her to befriend Adora and the others if she was a more upbeat person, but that's pretty much it. The premiere of Sea Rush Season 2 effortlessly ruined one of the most interesting characters. Maybe the third season will work to kind of amend this and any other potential situations like it that could arise, but until then, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a it was definitely a shorter video considering that um, I think my most recent video besides this one will have been over an hour long. So kind of kind of short, sweet to the point, but uh, there wasn't really a lot more I could talk about because um, Frosta didn't get a lot of screen time in the second season. So I just kind of went over what she doesn't get a lot of screen time in general. So I kind of just had to go over what she had gotten, and it ended up wrapping up in a couple of minutes. So. Uh, so I apologize if the video was a bit too short, but writing my Catra character analysis really had me wanting to take a look at some other characters, and I think Frosta was a good pick. But what do you think? Of uh, Frosta? Of the video? Any of your thoughts are welcome in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you left a like. It always helps. And finally, if you're new here, consider subscribing. It's true that I don't post very much, but I've been doing it a lot more as of late. And with season 3 or 4 of she out now, I'm sure there's a lot more to talk about. But that'll do it for this video. Once again, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, Arrivederci.